Aya, and welcome back to Distant Travels. I feel like with John's route, there isn't much left in it. So, let's just hop right in. Hang on. So we'll just, like, go through all this. How would you describe your personality? Trying to figure out my personality? Well then. Silly, fun, and surprisingly useful despite the looks. You've never struck me as anything but useful. You should see some of my first coder inventions. Maybe I'll show you later, but I need to keep some secrets if I want to stay interesting. It'd be awful if I ran out of surprises already, then I'd just be boring old me. He's more insecure than he seems. John takes another cookie from the plate and then passes the plate over to you. The cookies are good. Seems like John knows what he's doing. There's even small pieces of chocolate in them. Awesome. Now then, time to ask those questions. Might as well cut to the chase. You keep saying I'm cute and flirting. Are you really interested in me or is it just your personality? It's a little difficult to tell sometimes. A little bit of both. You are cute. Attractive, really. To summarize, you're new and interesting, fun and pleasant to look at. It's also just how I am as a person. I am flirty. Sorry. I am interested in you, but I also don't want to scare you off or get ahead of myself. That. Yeah. Sorry if, like, the quality's shitty. I have to, like, decrease the size. It's difficult at times with how I am. I don't think you'll scare me off. I'd tell you if you were too much, and I probably wouldn't spend hours in your workshop. I'll remember that. Isn't it weird, though? Me liking you? Don't get me wrong, I am interested in you too, but I am literally an alien to you. Hey, don't yuck someone's yum. It's not that uncommon on Arctos. Looks matter, but probably not in the same way it does for you. Since there seems to be a bit more diversity there, it's a little different from what I imagine Earth is. It's more about size or prospects as such, and I don't think you got you have you have got a problem with that, do you? I don't think I do. Too much information? Sorry if I'm too straightforward, I don't mean to rush. There's enough time on this trip to get to know someone properly. You got time to decide if you like me or not once you get to know me properly, and I got time to get to know you too. So to summarize, you are cute, and that's why I want to get to know you. I might be lewd, but there's some semblance of thinking behind it. I'll remember that. Thanks for the honest answer. It's a little awkward to ask, but it's a little hard to tell. How old are you? John gets a smirk on his face. Give me a guess and I'll let you know. You're not about to tell me you're not of legal age, are you? He laughs at that. <laughs> I am way past that. You can't help but smile at how funny he found that. How about 35? Almost. I'm 34. He suddenly looks a little insecure. Too old? You're not that much older than I am, really. I'm glad. I don't want to feel like or be a dirty old man. There's that thing about yucking someone's yum. Sorry, I- I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He's getting a little ahead of himself, huh? How'd you come to work on the Firefly? It's not really the most accessible job, at least to someone from Earth. Like he didn't know that. Why does this conversation feel so awkward? The look on his face puts you at ease, despite the intrusive thoughts. It's like he was expecting something more personal. I grew up on a farm, far away from the city. I was but a regular man when I realized that farm life had to do much, had too much work each day. The year was 1992. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a rainy day, but there was still work to be done. Just kidding! Long story short, I realized automation would make life easier. But I was excited to hear about the rain! What kind of breakfast you had and what underwear you picked that specific day. Oh, you wanted to see my underwear? That's what you got out of the joke? Right. As I was saying, I was interested in automation. So I went to school, I studied engineering in core. In core, the world just kind of opened up for me. I know what you mean. It's a different world once you get away from your roots. He nods knowingly. 
all of a sudden, all your choices and all the consequences are yours. I started dating, finally, and one of my boyfriends at the time introduced me to a friend of his, Dr. Charles Stevenson. A few years later, once my studies were finished, I started working for the government. Life was decent, had its ups and downs. Eventually, I was offered a job by someone who had recruited Charles. Turns out this someone, this was someone I knew from before, Mike. So the choice was easy. I was technically already military, having worked on orbital defense systems, so the transfer was easy. All of a sudden, I was working aboard the Firefly. I wasn't the only engineer back then. I was a junior surrounded by all these brilliant people. I felt more out of place than ever, but everyone was nice. Nobody cared about my complete lack of personality, only about what I could accomplish. You definitely don't suffer from a lack of personality. Thanks, but I definitely used to. I was flirty. That was it. That's why I think it's important to express yourself, especially if you're feeling out of place. It's a form of artistic expression. It's a little like writing something. It's said that an artist often draws in their own image. So if you make something of your own image, it'll be you. You're romantic. And a big softy. Not bad, right? Charmer, he planned that. Speaking of people in the Firefly, aside from yours truly, who's your favorite? I don't pick favorites. If you'd have to pick someone interesting, then what about Rex? He's a nice guy. He might even have convinced me to make pizza for everyone later. He's quickly becoming one of my favorites as well then. He might be a big softie in more, in more than one way. Are you calling me fat or are you talking about something else that's big and soft? You can't help but laugh at a sudden joke. That's lewd, even for you. I can't help it. It's one of my many flaws. Did you and Rex get close? He's interesting, and he asks the right questions, so he's easy to talk to. That's good. My turn for a question. Oh? What's your favorite spot for a nap on the Firefly so far? Honestly, I haven't really looked. I imagine taking a nap at the observation deck, looking out at the stars would be nice. Although, maybe a little cold. You're cold? Well, let's fix that. Here. He walks over, over to a panel on the wall and presses a few buttons. That should make it warmer in just a little bit. As for nap spots, remember when I said I knew the best nap spot on the Firefly? It's an engineering, isn't it? Yep. It's the rest cot here. Hmm. It might have some competition. So you think you'll get it eventually. There's something about the soft humming of all the engines accessible from here that makes it extra relaxing. You're not wrong. Silence falls as you ponder what you've learned about the big lug. Somehow, the silence gnaws at your mind, like there's something unsaid. More than one thing, really. Hey John, about the Spectre. Yeah? What are you supposed to hear? To me, it didn't really make sense. It's like it wasn't even talking about, or to me. Who was it talking about, then? Hmm. Should we tell him? Let's just tell him. The part that made me worried is that I think he was talking about you. That's disconcerting. But I don't think you need to put any deep thought into it. You probably just heard what you related to Arctos at that time. It's not real, remember that. I will. Thanks, John. Speaking of weird stuff, he gets an embarrassed blush on his face. So, uh, I read a little of, a uh, Earth Erotica. Really? Now? And there was this thing that stuck out to me. I gotta ask. Does it really, uh, hurt when you lay with someone? What on... what do you mean? A mix of pleasure and pain. No? Yikes. No, it's not supposed to hurt. Maybe your first time if you rush too much. Otherwise you're doing it wrong. Too tense. It's all about, uh, being relaxed and comfortable. I guess it's not completely unfounded, but no, it's not supposed to hurt. 
John looks visibly relieved. Oh, good. That's not really something you just ask, John. I kind of had to. I was worried for a bit. Right, I'm going back to work. Well, he certainly took your mind off the Spectre. You turn your attention back to the console. Speaking of erotica, there seems to be a folder named John and a subfolder called Private Stash in it. Hmm. I'm kind of curious, but I feel like we should respect his privacy. Hmm. Let's just leave it. Better not snoop. John yawns and stretches out his back. You ready for breakfast? Just about. The two of you finish up and walk to canteen together. Hello. This is it for the route in the zero. Ah. Uh. Okay. That's it for John's route. Let's check out some of the memories. John's memory, personal improvements. A few years back in a small town on Arctos. Wanna grab lunch together? John puts his hand behind his head and scratches the back of it as he formulates his response. I was going to ask you to dinner because of me shipping out and all tomorrow. So how about I take you out to lunch instead? Easy going as ever, huh? It's not like I'm going to the front lines. It'll be safe and sound at the space station. Probably with nothing to do. It'll be great and easy. Besides, I'll be working alone. There isn't going to be a single person around to make things hard for me. That was terrible. You read into that one by yourself. Can you blame me with how usually you are? With how you usually are? John laughs softly at that. Not really, no. Where do you want to go? How about that diner down the street? I'll finish this up and meet you there in about 15. Don't be late. As the other man leaves the room, John stretches his arms and back out and lets out a yawn. Do I really always do that? Those dirty and bad jokes? Maybe it's because I'm not quite like most people in that way. Was it... What was it my parents said? That I'm misled? It must be tiring for other people, I imagine. But then again, I am who I am. I'd rather find my own way than fit a mold, if it's going to make me that miserable. Besides, how will I find that someone who appreciates it if I'm not, if I'm not myself most of the time? After a few more minutes of work, finishing up the blueprint he was working on, John exits the building. Hmm. Now then, to lunch. No time for a nap today, by the looks of it. So, what did you get to eat? Roger simply shrugs. He got the usual, like always. Same for you? John chuckles at that. Yes, sir. Why not try some of the other things I've got? It's always the same with you. Of course I've tried the other stuff. This is just the best they've got. Reminds me of my mother's cooking, almost. Roger spins one of the utensils around idly in his hands, before, t before breaking the brief silence. I'm going to miss you, you know? I don't always say that with people I work with. Things will be different without you. Oh, feeling sentimental, are you? Roger elbows him rather hard, although the massive badger barely budges. Ow, quit it! <laughs> the two of them break out into light laughter. I'm not gonna leave forever, so don't worry. Remember just... Roger interrupts him with an exasperated but sarcastic tone. Yeah, yeah, I know, just call you. And he continues, softly and more sincerely. Just be careful, alright? After a brief pause, John flexes his arm in a wrestler kind of pose. With all this, oh, I'll be more than alright. Roger rolls his eyes with a stupid grin. Never change. Work in progress. The main story idea is here, but needs polish. Mike's memory. Distractions. A few years back, in Core Arctos. There's a sound as the shot hits the bullseye. 
I never thought I'd find something like this calming. So glad you found something relaxing. It's hard to focus on the world when you have to focus on your aim. Keep it up and you'll get as good as me someday. Oh? How about the lower score has to buy the other dinner? Looks like he'll be buying me dinner. By the way, how are things going for you? Seeing anyone? I wish I had the time, really. You'll find someone soon, I'm sure. The two continue their challenge, eventually finishing up with Mike barely winning. As they move to clean up, Mike's head is somewhere else. Um, okay. Can we just hide that? You doing alright, Mike? A little lightheaded, it's been a long week. Mike? Yeah, definitely couldn't show that, but I... Definitely fucked up. Do we have anything for Charles? I doubt it. I guess we don't. Hmm. Damn, this has been, like, really short. Uh... Hang on, let me, like... Just share my screen real quick. Um, I'm going to post a poll on Twitter real quick. Was a Charles or Nick? Yeah, this is about it. go uh sorry this one was extremely short but yeah uh i can't think of anything to say so stay safe have a good night and i'll see y'all tomorrow